Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. If you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably recently heard that uh, Autodesk uh, has made Eagle a paid subscription kind of service. Even if you're using the uh, free version of Eagle, you still have to have an Autodesk account and your Eagle copy still has to check in with Autodesk every, I think it's 14 days, something like that. And while I've been thinking about uh, trying KiCad for a couple of years now, I figured now is the time. Now the disclaimer here is that I am neither an expert in Eagle nor in KiCad. I've been using Eagle for, I don't know, four to five years now, and I'm reasonably comfortable in throwing together a, you know, a circuit board fairly quickly. I just recently started using KiCad, and I wanted to put together this video series uh, while uh, Eagle was uh, fresh in my mind. The reason for this is uh, I'm going to this video series is meant to be an introduction to KiCad from an Eagle user's perspective. That way, uh, if you're an Eagle user, I would like to uh, ease your transition to KiCad if you choose to do so. Now, the thing to keep in mind throughout all of this is that uh, neither Eagle nor KiCad are better than each other they are ultimately just different. The reason I say this is what's actually better than Eagle or KiCad would be like Altium Designer or uh, the Metagraphics Pads, which are, you know, uh, multi-thousand dollar uh, CAD packages and they do all kinds of fun and fancy things. Eagle and CAD, I'm uh, sorry, Eagle CAD and KiCad, there we go, uh, are in this lower echelon compared to the other ones and that's why neither one is really better than each other. As you go throughout uh, this uh, tutorial here, I will point out uh, what Eagle does better, what KiCad does better, but again, remember, uh, neither one is better than each other. They Each one has its own strong points and just remember that they're different. Uh, they have their own quirkiness. Eagle has its quirkiness and so does KiCad. And that's something to, to really keep in mind throughout this whole thing. Now the first big difference between Eagle and KiCad is their workflow. They have very drastically different workflow and for a, a Eagle user, the workflow of KiCad may seem strange. And so I wanted to compare and contrast the workflows. In Eagle, you start by making a schematic. And it sounds very simple. You make a schematic and then you go ahead and you do your PCB layout. And there's this really easy transition between the schematic and the PCB layout. While making the schematic in Eagle, if you have a, if you don't have the library all the library files to make the particular uh, schematic or board that you're uh, you're looking for you have to in the library editor make a symbol and a footprint together and then pull them into your schematic and then from the schematic you go to the PCB it's really that simple i mean if you if you want to say it like that the quirkiness with Eagle is that if you're doing a board layout, your schematic and your PCB layout need to be open at the same time to keep that linking between the two. Uh, because if you lose that linking between the PCB and the schematic, basically bad things happen. Now in KiCad, which is down here in blue, the, uh, the workflow is, you can see, a little bit more complicated, but there are reasons for this. Uh, first, you start off by making a schematic. While making the schematic, if you don't have the particular library files that you need, you will make the symbols. And here's the very first distinction. While making the schematic, you only have to make the symbols. You don't have to, uh, so, uh, you don't have to make the footprints like you do here with the symbol in Eagle. In KiCad, you just make the symbol and you any new symbols that you need you pull them into your schematic and you make the schematic and this is one advantage of KiCad if you're only looking to make the schematic you you can stop your process here 
an eagle, if you want to make a schematic, you either have to use dummy uh, symbols with, you know, crap footprints associated with them to then stop here. But in KiCad, so you make the symbols separately and then pull them into your schematic and then, uh, you know, assemble your schematic. Once the schematic is assembled, next you make a net list. The net list is the association of all of the uh, your uh, your symbols, your the pins that the symbols have, uh, and the uh, nets. In Eagle, that association is done as long as the schematic and the PCB are open together. Now, this is where the quote-unquote challenging part comes in. Once you make the net list, you have to associate footprints with the net list. Uh, this process effectively takes the symbols and associates footprints with them. And this is the step where if you needed footprints that you didn't have, you know, you made a new uh, schematic symbol and you needed some sort of oddball footprint, you would make that here and then associate it with the net list that you made. Once you uh, have the <clears throat> uh, the net list and the associated uh, footprints with it, then you import the net list into the PCB layout and do your PCB layout. Again, it's really difficult to say which one is better because in Eagle, as I said, uh, you have far fewer steps, but the drawback is that you have to make your symbols and your footprints at the same time. In KiCad, you have way more steps. This honestly looks way more complicated. So this is very intimidating uh, when I first started with KiCad. But uh, you, can, you can more incrementally break up the process because you know, over here, when you make your schematic, you can uh, make your symbols independently of your footprints here. And then when you finally make the, the net list, you would import your footprints at that point in time. So, so you can do this more incrementally. It's not as daunting up here because when you start a new project and you have all of these uh, footprints you have to deal with and symbols and library files etc this is a little more broken up so again it's a uh, uh, six of one half of dozen of the other it there neither one is particularly better they're just different so now let's jump over to the computer and we'll go ahead and walk through a very very simple board uh, we're just going to put a PIC 12F615 onto a board. Uh, we're going to design uh, a couple of, actually, no, just one uh, library file for, I'm sorry, a symbol file for it, that's the word I'm looking for, and uh, slap it into a schematic and connect it up with some uh, uh, pin headers. What you see here is KiCad's website. It is uh, KiCad-PCB.org. And this is where you would go to download your latest stable build. If you click on the download button here, and I am using Windows, you will see that the current uh, stable build is 4.0.5, and this is what we'll be using in our uh, introduction today. I do already have this downloaded and installed, and I would recommend installing the uh, 3D stuff with it. It'll ask you at the end of the installation. That way you can view your board in 3D. So now let's go ahead and get KiCad fired up. This is kind of a, um, this is equivalent to the project screen that you see in Eagle, where you have your projects here on the left. This uh, audio mixer board is the first board I designed in KiCad, and then you have some options here for stuff that you want to do. Uh, this opens a schema, which is their uh, KiCad schematic editor, uh, the schematic library editor, this is where you make your symbols, uh, PCB new is the uh, board editor, then you have your uh, PCB footprint editor, this is where you make your footprints. Uh, there is a Gerber viewer that's built in. Uh, there's a tool for converting bitmaps into like silkscreen stuff. There is a calculator. And then uh, 
I've not actually used the Pi Editor. Maybe that's a video I will do at a later time. So now that we've gotten our basic introduction here, we can uh, create a new project here. Uh, I'm going to put it in my uh, projects directory here. Let's uh, make a new folder. And we're, let's call this uh, pick 12F615, like that. Go ahead, open you up, and let's let's call the project pick 12F615. The pick 12F615 processor is something that I have used in the past. It's a pretty decent processor. I mean, it's very small. You can get it in a SOIC, and uh, I'm actually debating whether we want to... Actually, let's make this project using a SOIC. Uh, to make it a little easier to solder and uh, we'll put it on the little uh, breakout PCB that way it's really easy to handle it on a breadboard and we'll actually line the pins up so <clears throat> uh, they'll work on a breadboard. Now you can see that the project is load the new project is loaded here on the left hand side and there's two files in here the KiCad uh, underscore PCB this is the board file and the dot uh, sch this is the schematic and you can double click on one of these to open it so let's go ahead and do that and there we go the new schematic opens up in the new schematic here uh, you can see that the frame is already in here for you which uh, makes it nice to work with and uh, something to understand right away a, a, a big difference is while uh, Eagle used a tool-based workflow. Uh, KiCad uses a keyboard shortcut-based workflow, and you know we'll see a little bit later uh, what that looks like. But first, we want to put something in here. The uh, to put something in here, we're going to do place component. And uh, as you can see, the mouse has changed from a uh, you know, I'm a uh, arrow symbol to a pen, and now you can click somewhere. Let's click over here, and the uh, component menu comes up. In the component menu, uh, we're going to look for connector. That's this con here, and we're going to look for just like a, a one by five, like that. And you can see a little description here of a 1x5 connector. And we're going to go ahead and put two of these in here. One, and then grab another one. Okay, uh, two. Something to note is that uh, KiCad seems to be a little more deliberate than Eagle. Where in Eagle, you can select uh, a part and just keep throwing them in here. Uh, KiCad wants to know, are you sure you're putting in the correct part, etc. Uh, the navigation in uh, KiCad is very similar. The uh, scroll wheel zooms you in and zooms you out. Something to note is that as soon as you zoom in, you always snap to the center of your mouse. So if I wanted to look at this connector over here, as soon as I zoom in, this connector snaps to the middle. If I move over here and zoom in again, this connector snaps to the middle. It's actually an easier navigation style to deal with than with Eagle, because Eagle seems to zoom in almost willy-nilly. Uh, but it does take some getting used to because of the, the that snapping action. <clears throat> Uh, now that we've got uh, the connector, the two connectors laid in here, we want to add a capacitor so we can, uh, we already have our uh, place component selected. You see how I clicked on that, kind of like Eagle? It's a, it, it does take a little bit of getting used to. Click again, and we're going to look for capacitor. These, this filter tool works so much better than uh, Eagle's. So we're going to hit C. And we, right at the top of the list, uh, unpolarized capacitor. We want to go ahead and put that in there. And we, uh, the final thing we need to do is make a symbol for our microcontroller. Let me go ahead and grab the <coughs> arrow tool again. And uh, let's do just a little bit of tidying up. 
something to understand with a uh, KiCad is uh, you can either use keyboard shortcuts and if you hit shift question mark again hold shift and hit question mark uh, you get this really nice uh, window of all of your uh, keyboard shortcuts these are very 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 useful <clears throat> or you can uh, navigate almost anything by right clicking on it and moving up this menu so you can do uh, move component m or drag component which is g and let me demonstrate if i hit m now my component can be moved around uh, i don't know if you noticed or not but let me do that again i right click and go hit m and notice how my mouse will actually snap from right up here to down where the component is when I click. Very, very useful. It, it makes it really nice to work with. Whereas with an eagle, let me put that back down. An eagle, if I had the menu and I clicked up here, the component would actually snap right to where my mouse was. The mouse doesn't snap to the component. But anyway, that's just a little something I really like. Uh, or I could hit M. You know, I could hover my mouse over the component and hit M. And let me see if I can get it to come up. Nope. I'm hoping to... I guess I need to have a, a more complicated uh, schematic. Uh, with Eagle, whenever you would use the Move tool, for example, and Eagle didn't know what you were trying to move, uh, it would first highlight the thing you were interested in and then by right clicking you would select which you, which component you wanted and would scroll through all the ones and you would left click again to uh, select that specific component to move it in KiCad if KiCad doesn't know exactly what you want to do a little menu pops up and then you can select it from the menu maybe I'll get it to show that to you a little bit later Something else to notice, and if you didn't, I'm going to hit M. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and hit M. Uh, in Eagle, uh, your uh, component is uh, locked to your symbols here, and you actually have to smash the component to unlock the symbols out of it. In KiCad, the symbol, the uh, reference designators, or the values are uh, their own separate entities, and you can see you still get that line like you do in Eagle. The other thing to note, and I was hitting M to move those, uh, we'll talk about M and G separately a little bit later. The other thing to know is, is your reference designator here, P, has a question mark behind it. And there's a very good reason for that, and we'll talk about that later. So now we want to tidy this up a little bit. We want to uh, hover the mouse over C, and you can hit R to rotate the component, or you can hit M to move the component, and while the component is in motion, you can hit R to rotate it like that. Let me go ahead and put that down. Uh, also, it said I can hit M to hold the component, and I can hit F. Nope, that's not the one I wanted. Let me try this. Uh, let's look at the menu, because some of these shortcuts I get confused with. Component orientation, uh, mirror, that's what we wanted. We want to mirror it along the y-axis because we want these components to flip this way. And then hit M to go ahead and move them. I'll do my best to call out the <clears throat> uh, keyboard shortcuts I'm using uh, while I use them. So now that we have these guys together, we want to make a symbol for our <clears throat> uh, processor here. Let's go ahead and jump up here. Right here is the library editor, and this creates uh, your symbols. Go ahead and fire that up. And something to note here is that there's no uh, library selected up here, which uh, eh, we did, you know, um, this is something we'll deal with here in a second. Uh, the easiest way to deal with this, and again, this is a little quirky you can go ahead and uh, load a component and we want to do 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 i'm trying to think what the best way of doing this audio device said i am not quite as familiar with some of these. Actually, let's do it a different way. 
since we already have the capacitor selected here, we can edit component and edit with library editor. Like that, so we have a uh, symbol pulled up, and then we can go up here and go... Uh, uh, oh, which one is it? As you can tell... I am not the the expert on this. I believe it's safe current library as no. Hmm. I could have sworn I had this uh, worked out. So in the devices library, uh, so there's a it, it, there's a goofy process in creating a new current library save current library as. So there's a goofy process in creating a new component. Let's try going back to this way and new working library. Um, I guess let's go with new component. Let's, let's go this way. This might be easier. Uh, component name. What do we want our component name to be? And let's call this the pick 12F615, like that. Our default red de uh, reference designator is U, and for uh, things like chips and whatnot u tends to be the case and this will become like u1 u2 u3 etc uh, the number of units per package for us it's one what this one is is that uh if you have let's say like a an op amp with uh, two things inside it uh, uh you know a dual op amp is the word i'm looking for the this allows you, if you jump this up to two, to create two different op amps and place them separately, but still have them associated with the same package. Uh, the rest of the things I wouldn't uh, particularly worry about. Then we can hit OK. And uh, let me zoom out here. Use the scroll wheel. And to pan, you push the scroll wheel. The navigation here is just like Eagle. Uh, the reference designator and the name here are already put in here for you. And this is where I get a chance to show you this menu selection thing. So if I put my mouse over our, you know, right here in the middle, and I hit M to move, it will say clarify selection. What do you want to move? Do you want to move your uh, value or your reference designator? So I want to move the value and move this up here. And now go ahead and hit M and move our footprint down here. And uh, do, do, do. Oh, there we go. Save current component to new library. And this is the one I was looking for. So now we can take this component and save it to a new library. So we have, uh, we can see some uh, library files here that um, I've been. Sorry about that. And we're back because I am confusing myself thoroughly. So what we want to do is we want to uh, save a current component to new library like that. And uh, this is already the location where I save my uh, libraries to. You can navigate to wherever you want to go. And uh, what do we want to call the... Let's call this the uh, processor library. And let's say we're going to put all of our processors in here and hit save. Like that, and you'll get this warning. This library will not be available uh, you, uh, until it is loaded by a schema. Modify the schema library configuration if you want to include this part as part uh, of this project and hit OK. Something that you'll notice is up here, 
our uh, uh, processor library is not the active library. So oh, first we have to go to preferences, component libraries, and we have to add it to our uh, add. We want to navigate to, I like to keep all of my projects in Dropbox, hardware, library files, and here is the uh, KiCad. And here is that processor library. And we, when we hit open, this appears here as our last <clears throat> thing in our library. And you can actually add paths and other things, etc. But we're not going to worry about that for now. And hit OK. So now if we go here, select working library. Do, do, do we should be able to see it come up as a, let's try, processor. There it is. There is our working library and hit OK. And then we can see processor up here and as a working library and we can continue working. Let me get the, I'm going to hit M here and move this over like that. Now to add pins, we go over here and use the uh, add pins to component tool and again you see that we get a little uh, pencil looking thing and then when we click it somewhere we get a menu that comes up in the menu we want to uh, name the component we want to do the pin number the pin number is very very important because the pin number is what is used to link the pins to the footprints whenever you do the uh, symbol to footprint associations later on so I have the data sheet for the processor pulled up right behind here. Whoops, let me scroll back up. Right here we have the uh, PIC uh, 12F615 and pin number one is VDD. We want to go ahead and jump over here and call this VDD. This is going to be pin number one and you don't really have to worry about anything else and hit OK. And let me go ahead and drop this like that. You can see that uh, where the uh, line is going to, where the uh, net is going to attach to the pin here is desica designated by this little circle. And now we can click again to generate our next pin. And let's go ahead and look here. Our second pin is GP5. And for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to type all those out just to save time. GP5, and this is pin 2. We're just going to label our most important pins. Let's see here, GP4, and this is pin 3. GP4, oops, 4, this is pin 3. Okay, like that. Our next pin is GP3, and that's pin 4. Nice and confusing there for you. GP3, this is pin 4. Like that. And now we want to come over here, and we know this is going to be pin 5. Um, which uh, is GP2. GP2. And once the pin is out here, you can hit R to rotate it around. Like that. Oh, I'm sorry, what did I say that was? That was GP2. GP1. This is pin 6. And actually something I wanted to add in here, if I remember correctly. Uh, pin 6 here is the ICSP clock. And I can go ahead and add that in there as well. ICSP, CLK. And that's why I spaced them out so far so that stuff would fit. Uh, once you drop the pin, you can hit M and go ahead and slide it down. Grab the tool again. Grab our next pin. 
This is pin 7. This is GP0. Uh, ICSP. That. Like that. And we can go ahead and verify that. Uh, GP0, ICSP dot, and then our last pin is VSS. Oops. Drop the last pin, VSS, which is ground. This is pin 8, like that. And I did this semi-deliberately. Uh, the other uh, data label that we're interested in is for GP3. And it is this MCLR VPP function. In this case, we're just going to put a VPP, but we have to edit the pin to do that. And so if we come over here uh, and go ahead, we can right click and I'll show you uh, edit pin is E. So let me close out of this and hit E. And we can go ahead and hit underscore VPP like that. Uh, to clean it up and make it look nice, we can throw a box over it. And to help us put that box in, we can change how our mouse pointer looks, the change cursor shape. So that way we can uh, line it up nicely like that. It's click once, bring out the box, and then click again to drop the box into place. And I'm going to turn that back off because it annoys me. And now we can use the M key to go ahead and move that over here and use the M key to move that up here. And we are all done. And go ahead and save it. Include last component change, yes. Modify library processor, yes. And we are all done here. We can go ahead and close out of view and go back to the schematic. And we can double check that our component libraries includes this uh, processor library. Like that. Let's cancel out of that. And now we can go ahead and drop this uh, processor in. Click the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, uh, place component. And then once you do that, click in the middle of the screen here. And now we can go ahead and find our library. There's a nice history here. But we can look for oh, not quite that simple processor. There it is. And here is our pick processor that we just made. And hit OK to drop it in like that. <clears throat> now that we have uh, this processor installed, we can go ahead and wire it up. We're going to grab the place wire tool. There's no net separate net tool to deal with, which is annoying pants. And then uh, the place wire is nice and distinct from place graphical line or polygon. You know, there's not this wire and net tool difference. But anyway, uh, now that we have that in place, we're going to wire one connector for five pins uh, to make it the programming header for the processor. That way you'd be able to pluck the processor out of the breadboard and program it directly. That's the, the real key here that I was going for. And so we want to, uh, the pinout for the uh, PitKit3 programmer is VPP. And you can see when the, the line is properly connected, the circles disappear here. After VPP, we have uh, VDD. Then we have... Uh, this is going to get a little messy. Sorry. VSS. And then uh, I see that. And uh, I see clock. The, uh, r the routing of the pins is actually fairly intuitive as far as how you click and select and drag things. And uh, we have three pins that are left over. And so what we can do is we can wire these pins up to pins on... 
this connector I know this is going to be a very very ugly schematic sorry about that and I was thinking about it what would be a good way to I don't know, so to put this together and with the last two pins left, we could put the VSS and VDD pins on the other side as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Why not? And we want to, uh, eh, I guess there's, eh, no, maybe that won't be such a great idea because the, the two footprints won't, won't be similar. And so what we could do. Mm, let's do this. Uh, what we could do is uh, put the, let's say, these two pins over here as well, just to kind of give us some general thing. When you program this, you're probably going to want to yank it out of the board to uh, do that. And so we shouldn't worry about any kind of loading on the pins. Bring that over here, and you can see that it adds a... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, crap, what, uh, uh, what do they call it? a junction right there? Hit escape. Uh, if you want to delete something once you router, let's say, uh, oops, I connected these two together, you would use the delete key. But again, something you have to remember is uh, KiCad is very deliberate in how they do things, so you hover your mouse over the junction and hit delete and it will ask you what do you want to delete well i want to delete the junction like that and you can see that the uh net here the wire uh, will show that it's unconnected now i want to hover over the wire and hit delete and it'll actually end up deleting everything but in our case that's okay because we want to bring this over here like that and then connect this up to this way and finally, we want to connect our capacitor. And the capacitor is going to be the decoupling cap. We want to put it as close to the processor as possible. So we want to move it over here like that and like that. And we are all done. I, again, understand that the schematic kind of looks like hell. We could definitely do a better job of it. Uh, something to help us with that is if we come over here and look at the place power port go ahead and uh, once you've selected it click it and this is where you can get your uh, nice and simple you know let's say we wanted to do uh, g and d select it looks like that hit ok and drop it in to clean it up but uh, it's fine this is for demonstration purposes this is just to to get your be quit so to speak but anyway place components with the place component tool you can place the power port with the place power port tool and now we are all uh, done with our schematic thank you for watching if you have any questions you're always welcome to uh, put them down below said so i try to do this in a perspective from a uh, as i mentioned from an eagle user uh, the this is the first video in the series the next video is going to be the process of moving everything over to you know to the uh, the pcb and uh, you know we'll pick it up then